Now we've already talked a bit about SQL Server indexes and how those can help speed up querying the database. When we start talking about modifying data, well, we've moved into an area where SQL Server indexes can both help and hurt. If your modification statement contains a WHERE clause to limit the scope of the modification, and many modification statements will contain a WHERE clause, then having the right indexes can speed it up because those indexes essentially speed up the WHERE clause. But every modification means that the indexes also have to be modified, so having more indexes can slow things down. Consider that as we review the modification queries in detail, and keep it in mind as you think about indexes. So let's start with the insert into statement. Here's what it looks like. You begin with the command itself, insert into. Then you provide a table name. In parentheses, you provide a comma-separated list of the columns that you want to provide values for. Then you have the keyword values, and in a second set of parentheses, you include all of the values that will go into those columns. Numeric values do not get delimited, as shown here by the value 1. String values, as well as date values, get delimited in single quotation marks. Dates must be provided in a format that SQL Server can recognize, in this case, month, day, year, or day, month, year. You must specify all columns and provide values for them, that do not allow a null value and do not provide a default value as part of the table's design. Both of those things are decided when you create the table. You must provide the values in the same order as the column list. However, that column list can be in any order you like. And if a string value contains a single quote, such as the name O'Brien, you must double it. That single quotation mark thing can be a little confusing, so let's look at it in much, much bigger detail. Here we've got the name O'Brien, which we want to contain within single quotation marks. If we just allowed the single quote between the O and the B, then it would look to SQL as if only the O was quoted and the Brian was just hanging off there by itself. So we double the single quote whenever we mean a literal single quote or apostrophe. So we've got the outermost single quotes actually delimiting the contents of the string. This is the quote or apostrophe in the name O'Brien. And this is the extra one, and it escapes the quote that follows. In other words, SQL Server will see those two as a single, literal, single quote or apostrophe. Making sure that single quotes are properly escaped is probably one of the most important parts of protecting against SQL injection attacks, which we discussed in a previous lesson. Many programming libraries have got utilities that do this for you, so you just have to tell them to escape a particular string, such as user input, and they'll handle it. Values that are fed to the parameters of a stored procedure don't need to be escaped because the entire value is actually treated as a single unit and so it doesn't need to be delimited at all, and that's another advantage of using stored procedures. Let's go into SQL Server Management Studio and start playing a little bit with the insert into command. For this example, I'm going to use my test database rather than AdventureWorks so that I, I don't have to worry about messing up my sample data. I've expanded the test database so I can see the two tables I've created, people and products, as well as the three columns in people and the two columns in product. I'll open a new query window, make sure that it is focused on my test database, and it is. So let's go ahead and write an insert query. Insert into, my table name in this case will be people, and I'm going to insert values for the ID and name columns. That would be a comma separated list. And the values I'll provide will be 1, and then we'll come up with a name, Don. Execute that query. Excellent. Now, normally I would maybe quickly check that with a select query just to make sure it worked, but just so you can kind of see this visually, let's select the top thousand rows, and you can see that 1 and Don were inserted. Address contains a null value because I did not provide a value for it. 
let's leave this up here and do it again. We'll insert value. Well, actually, you know what? Let's this time just insert a name and an address. So there's our name. Because address is potentially a keyword, I'm going to put it in square brackets. That way the color coding looks correct to me. And let's run this. We got an error and it said it cannot insert the value null into the column ID because the column does not allow nulls. So the insert failed. We can actually see that over here. It says that the ID column contains an integer and has the not null constraint applied to it. So that's what happens if you don't provide a value for a column that requires a value but does not provide a default value.